I've seen him earlier. We'll, we'll, we'll figure things out. Everything should be in the, in the subversion, but we've really been concentrating on the CUDA part so far. Um, once there, there's a discrepancy uh, between the three months we need to get these tables, say Congress, uh, and the one to two years that, that Harald was mentioning in, in when people will be running around uh, uh, having clear text on their drives. Uh, where does the other one year, one year and, and, and nine months go? What's, what's still needed in, in the meantime? Well, um, I think it's, uh, on the one hand, it's probably a different level of optimism versus pessimism. <laughs> Many people have accused me of being overly pessimistic with things. So, um, 80 people, come on. Don't let me down, guys. 80 <laughs> people. Yeah, so... Um, well, as I indicated, there are many parts of the, the receiver software that need to be done. So far, we only have the downlink. There is no uplink receiver code. The user interface is non-existent. Um, the quality of the received signal is not high enough, and so on. So there's many areas that need work on the actual GSM receiver side inside AirPro. And um, it's a question of how many people will contribute to that. It's not that you know um, the people who are working on AirProbe now are you know the providers of something, and and you know everyone else is consuming it. We are a community, and um, there is the depend like the, the 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 point in time upon which a certain project will be finished depends on how much contribution the project gets, like any other open source project as well. So um, you know he needs people for you know comp helping him to compute. But he already had other people who helped him on, uh, with the, the actual implementations that are there now. And maybe in a, in a month or in two weeks or whatever, some, some super brilliant uh, CUDA or, or FPGA hacker has optimized the, the, the code even further. And just like our receiver software right now, it's like, yeah, it's barely able to, to do a, a halfway decent job. But, you know, maybe in, in two or three weeks, somebody has solved the problem because he has the expertise in that particular area. I'm not a digital signal processing guy. Other people are. Hi, I wondered, Harold, if you're planning to implement A51 and OpenBSC so that we can run our own test networks and then crack them? Because I think that would make it a lot, like I, I have the BS11 and I have the GNU radio, and if I could do the whole thing all at once, it would work well with the FPGAs. Yeah, um, so the question, if I understood correctly, was when will there be encryption in, in OpenBSC? Um, a support for encryption. Um, uh, well, once again, is as soon as somebody implements it, as always. It's not hard. It's very, there's already um, one of our developers, Dieter, he already had a proof of concept uh, implementation and it worked. All that the BSC or the higher levels of the network management need to do is to tell the BTS the correct key and tell it switch on encryption. That's it. Yes. Well, of course, if you want to have encryption, you need to know the KI, the internal key of the SIM card. But like, if you have at, your ho at home, you have a BS11 or some other BTS, and you have a couple of phones, and you buy some you know, readily available cheap Chinese cloning SIM cards where you can manually set the, the, the key, um, then you can set the key, you, thereby knowing the key inside the SIM card, and then you can trigger the authentication algorithm, and you can uh, s uh, set the resulting session key into the BTS. But the, the OpenBSC or any other BSC software does not need to know the algorithm or not do any cryptographic computation by itself. Is there a need for someone to, I, I have one of those, I was in China, I have one of those programmable SIM cards. Um, is there a need for someone to write some software to program SIM cards, or has that already been done? Well, so far, I do not know any free software, open source software that ships uh, or that can be used on these uh, uh, SIM cards. Um, all the, the, the vendors ship is you get the SIM card and you get some Windows proprietary software for setting the actual key. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't looked at the protocol yet that they talk. So yes, there is a need for a, a, a free software program that can write to those uh, not uh, to these writable SIM cards. Any more questions? Okay, then thanks for attending and uh, happy computing. <laughs>